which is one of the points of the 24 points in the solar terms in the lunar calendar. So they divided a one full circle of the Earth around the Sun, you know, like one full year and then divide into 24 points. And on the fifth one is the Qingming. Okay, this is the Chinese term it means. Um, it is about two weeks after the March equinox. That is the time you can see the seasonal change, just like what uh, the season here, like the weather here. When the cold weather finally gone, and then we started to have lots of rains, and then sun finally comes just like today, you know, after the past two days of rain, uh, lots of rain. So I'm quite happy today that we have a bright and sunshine today. So Qingming is also uh, on that day, you know, also a, a day like that. When everything is uh, warm up and then lots of rain, humid, and the agriculture, you know, the farm started to grow again. And this also a very special, a very important day. Um, Qingming Festival is also a time, the day, where all the Asian, you know, especially Chinese, to visit their ancestors or the past away one, their tombs, you know, to pay respects and honor them. That's why Qingming Festival is also being called the Tang Sui Day. In Chinese, we call Sao Mu, you know. It is also a way to honor like the parents, the pass away, the departed one, or your great parents or great great ones, uh, anybody that you love, okay, that you concern about and you want to visit them, that is the day, okay, and this happened on that day too. And traditionally, because this day is so important, you know. This day is so important that they take this very seriously. That's why they actually in Chinese traditional Chinese they have many customs. For example, when I was a kid, I remember that they say the, the adult would say something like this: "Don't run and jump joyful. You need to walk quietly, properly. You know, to visit the grand grandpa's or grandma's home. So this is something serious. You know, they take it very serious, and you have to." do this and don't do that and there are many taboos that they have to follow and the, the traditional way is something like this this is a very important family event and because the, the town is in a hilly open area so they visit once a, once a year and this is also the time where all the families especially from the men's side to clean you know to remove all the weeds and all the trash and then clean everything and do painting. This is a very traditional way that I show you here. But now, especially in the city area, because of the limited land, so they promote, people encourage you to have cremations, you know, instead of have to bury onto, into the land. That's why most of the people, they change the ways of honoring their ancestors. Instead of going to the grave, yeah, you know, having this, they still keep this. But most of them, they choose to put the ashes, you know, in a special place. For example, in a temple, especially for Buddhists. You know, Buddhists will prefer to keep their, uh, the deceased one, the ashes, in a temple so that they have a chance when they come to the temple to practice, they also have a chance to remembering uh, the, the past, the, the people who are passed away. That's why for us at Mava, we have a place called Dizan Hall. And inside the Dizan Hall, you, have, you can see many slots where people come and put the ashes and then to honor them. So today is that special day. Okay? And it's, instead of the, the traditional way that they will offer all kinds of food offerings, flowers, and things that they think the the past, the departed one would like. Now here, in our at Mava or the Buddhist way, we encourage people just to make offerings like using flowers or fruits. This way you see, you will see many fruits and flowers on the table. There is also a way of you know, showing respects and offer. So today, after lunch at 1.30, for people who would like to, to join us, then you are welcome to join us for a chanting, a short chanting. There is also a way to transfer our blessings to all the departed ones. Okay, after lunch, one thirty at the Zhang Hall. 
and we have the Venerable from our Chicago temple come and lead the chanting too. So this is not just um, only the Chinese way, you know, to honor the ancestor or the parents or the pass away one. Then I noticed that actually in many, almost everywhere in the world, you know, all kinds of uh, religious belief, uh, nations, everyone have their own ways to honor your family members, right? Yeah. And then because family is very important, that is where you, you grow up with, that is where you will nourish and grow up and educate and be your support in your life. And family, when we talk about family, is not just limited to your biological family. It can be your adopted family, and it can be for us, you know, the practice, our practitioner. Very important one is the Dharma family. Dharma family means someone who are greater than you, like a very important teacher, you know, that he show you or he point out a way for you that is become your important turning point in your life. For this kind of people, important people in our life, we call this is our Dharma parents. And also along our spiritual path, we meet like different friends, companions, they can give us support and sometimes we support them. So they become a very special friendship in our spiritual practice. So we call this Dharma companions. So no matter what, we definitely in our life, we cannot live alone, you know. We cannot survive alone, we need someone, you know, there are always someone around us. This can be our family, siblings, colleagues, you know, your and, uh, husband and wife, children. So we live in a society, in a community, and all these people are so important to us. They give us support in different ways. Sometimes they give very kind, you know, support, and sometimes they can give support in a in a more challenging way, okay? So when we look back to our life, we, thanks to all these people. And so come to here, then I realized that no matter what, the conclusion is no matter how you honor them, how you respect them, that the principle is always people, you know, our ancestor is always the root of our support. That's why I would like to say that, okay, not only, not only about uh, paying respect to the past, the, the one already passed away, but they also take the chance, you know, take the chance and on this season, on this special day, we have the out, outings. This is also another way, you know, another important family event, outing in the streets, you know. So, Mm. You might you might think that oh Mamba is a good place to you know because now all the uh, trees and the flowers started to blossom and we see really significant change every day. Okay, so please enjoy your time at Mamba and enjoy the outside the green. You know when you have the time after this after lunch. You know if you would like to. So Qingming is also a time, another way that they have a name called it is like a Ta Qing, that means outing, spring outing. They go out and enjoy all the green and the fresh, spring fresh outside. And talking back now, back to the, the society about our family, and the conclusion that I would like to point out just now actually is, yeah, this is what we really appreciate all the time. We always want to know, you know, look at our roots. That is where we come from, the support where we come from. Okay, if we trace back the support, it comes from our grandparents, you know, great grandparents, and so on and so on and so on. When we trace back, it's really all the people that we know or we heard of, if we share the same family names or not, they are all the support that bring from since his long history up to here. So when we look at the human kind, the development that we have, developments that we have today, actually it's all the efforts and the diligence that are put together by all the humans on this world. And definitely we want to thank them. And so come and when we want to thank and show our honors, show our respect and gratitude, at the same time 
We want, why we want to thank them? Thanks them for their efforts in help us to have a better life, to eliminate all the suffering and the stresses in our life. Okay. So in Buddhism, we really also have the same goal. That the final goal is to liberate, to help us to have the freedom from all kinds of difficulties, from all kinds of uh, stresses. Okay, but not just talking about ultimate, the ultimate liberation. That is too high. That is a goal that is too high for most of the people. So we always and Buddha knows this. Buddha is our teacher, the first teachers in Buddhism. He always. When, when a non-Buddhist or an ordinary come into, we always will encourage and we teach them how to develop a family, a happiness in your family first. That's why the teaching has different levels, okay? We start with the basic, the individual happiness, family happiness, and step by step, we move on to the ultimate liberations, the ultimate freedoms and happiness. There's there are also in the text, if you go back to check the text in Buddhism, you can find that there is some advices from the Buddha or the great disciples to the lay people. So one of the sutra that I would like to share with you is the Buddha's advice to the lay people. So in this, the background of this story is like this. So one day, Buddha went out to go for Amsa in the morning, okay, and he met this, uh, he met this, uh, this uh, young, young guy, he is not a Buddhist, okay, but he saw, Buddha saw him have a very uh, devotedly in making prayers, you know, prayers to different directions. Then the Buddha asked, what are you praying for? Then he said, oh, this is what my father taught me before he passed away. He said that, Every morning, I need to pray to six directions, you know, in order, this is, I, and I want to perform, I want to carry out the family traditions. Then the Buddha says that, well, the correct way to pay respect to six directions actually is like this. He say the meaning behind these six directions representing different group of people. They say that the East is your parents, okay, and then also your teachers, husband and wife, children, friends, companions, your colleagues, your supervisor, okay, or your leaders, and your spiritual teachers. So when we look back, and after this, after explaining the meanings of the directions, then the Buddha also says that in each further explains saying that to each of these people, how we should honor, respect them, in order we can live in harmony, in order we can win their respect too, okay? I'm not going to go through all the details here, but I want to point out just a few. Um, the, the first one is how the parents and the children treat each other, you know, based on that, the, because the background is in India. So according to the Indian uh, way the custom and the Buddha was the, the basic the basic responsibility of parents is he said that oh when the kids are still young you need to tell them how to restrain themselves you know to avoid doing the harm to avoid doing the evil things and encourage to teach them how to cultivate the wholesome doing the good this is the responsibility of our parents when the children are still small you need to how to adjust them so that they become a wholesome person. Okay, and also you need to teach them to ed educate them so that they can learn a profession or a skills so that when they grow up, they can earn their own livings to make them independent on themselves, not just to support themselves, but also to support others. And of course, to help them to, their, uh, help them to form their family when they reach the proper time, okay? Of course, here we don't talk about arranged marriage, okay? But the meaning behind is to make sure that the children, when they grow to become a mature adults, they can form their family life too. And when it's the time, let the children become the owner to take care of the family business if you have to, okay? That is the <coughs> principle behind. And in return, in return, what the children should do to treat their parents, they need to always support the parents, especially when the parents get old, 
when the parents were sick, when the parents get weak. Okay, there is the time we as the children need to support them financially, spiritually, when they need someone to talk to. You know, when people get old, most of the time, what they need more is they want you to be the companion, you know. They want you to be by their side. Not just about material, it's not just about money, okay. They can have, I so many old people, they, they earn a lot, you know, when they were young, that's why they have enough saving. But once they go to the senior home, they become so lonely, even though they don't lack of assistance, you know. They don't lack of financial problem, they don't have financial problem, they have very good caretakers. But what they really need is someone behind, beside them to take care of them, to have someone to talk to, you know, that kind of support. So when we say support, it's really all forms of support. And also perform children, as a children, perform your duty, how to really respect and honor your parents every day, okay? And keep up the family traditions and be the one who are worthy to be your own heritage and on behalf this has a very, uh, very uh, deep meaning behind. Distribute the present or the gift on behalf of your departed parents and relatives. That means it's a continuation of practicing generosity. Okay, On behalf of your parents or on behalf of someone that you respect, it's also a way to praise, you know, to honor them. And next, the other relationship is husband and wife, you know. So we talk about uh, partners here, because not many people, not all the couples, they get married nowadays. They live together, but they are not necessarily get married, okay? But here is about the responsibility between partners. You honor each other, and you say good words, and no disparaging, and be faithful always, and also respect their rights, respect their responsibility, respect their talents that they can do things, and then provide the necessities that they need, okay? And also be diligent, be responsible, play your roles fully. So that is the basic meaning here. And now, now talk, the next is talking about friends. Well, how about friends between friends? We support friends by giving presents, you know, something that you can please them. Okay, say some kind words, supportive words, encourage words, encouraging words, and help them to look after the welfare, you know, take care of their home, take care of the property when they need that. And then as and very important is you treat your friends at your as like you treat yourself. This is very important. This is how we the way, the best way to earn uh, really the true friendship. How many times when we look back, you know, to our friends? The friends that you really treasure a lot is the friend that really open up their heart to you and they really take you like you are the, the only best friends, right? These are the best friends that you own. So it's the same too. If you wish to have this kind of friends, we need to treat people in that way too. Okay. And now I would like to uh, share a little bit about my own experience. You know, when I first came to United States, I came here alone because I want to study. So and nobody, and so nobody to take care and I have to start everything from zero. So, and make new friendships, you know, friends and, and colleagues that I started to work. And from zero, from all the strangers, I, I definitely need help, you know, to start a new life in a new country. There are lots of things that I couldn't do by myself, especially the culture is so strange to me too. But luckily, there are always certain people, you know, that I don't know, that they just offer the house. Helps, little helps, little, little helps, you know, something is just like I was lost on the street, you know. United States, the road is always north, east, west, south, and then by numbers. For me, this is a uh, different system, okay. So, the stranger will work and, oh, you walk to the east, not to the west. For me, I don't know why it's west and north, you know. So I really thank you. Know, even this cup, little help, I really appreciate. It helped me to save lots of time. And sometimes, oh, just all kinds of things that happen. And slowly I really appreciate all these kind of people. And in Buddhism, we have a term for these kind of people. That means they sacrifice their time, you know, 
and their energy, they are so kind-hearted that they want to they see you in trouble and they point you out the way out. And for this kind of people, we have a name for them. That is the Bodhisattva. Okay? Bodhisattva not necessarily have to be the great, great Bodhisattva. As long as at that moment you have this really kind heart. And that one and that you want to help people, you know. The pure kind heart that you want to help people and that you sacrifice your time you can put aside of your job, you know, your and then just focus on this without asking back any return. So this we say, oh, this is very bodhisattva practice. We sometimes that's why when we see these kind of people, we say, this is bodhisattva spirit, or this is bodhisattva practice. You know, this is how I feel like. This is what I see. This is. You remember, for those who have come to the Bodhisattva retreat, I think two weeks ago or one week ago, we talk about different Bodhisattva at different levels. Okay, but in the Bodhisattva retreat, the ten Bumis that we talk about is the advanced. The advanced then is really big. But for examples, the four four famous, well-known, great Bodhisattvas in Mahayana Buddhism, we have Guanyin Bodhisattva in Guanyin Pavilion. And we have the Dizang Bodhisattva in the Dizang Hall. Later on, you will see that. And then we have Manjushri Bodhisattva. We also have the Samanda Brother Bodhisattva. Those are the great, great Bodhisattva, okay? Great beings. But for us, we are not the great, great person yet. But we can start from this by doing all these little kind and compassionate things in our daily life. Just like a kindergarten. We aim for a Great school, the highest degree, but we start from the kindergarten, okay? That's why we always honor the great Bodhisattva. And today we also like to take the chance to commemorate one of the four great Bodhisattva, which is the Samanda brother Bodhisattva. So, why we have to choose this day? Because uh, the birthday of Bodhisattva Samanda Bodhisattva is on March 22nd and 27th, which is a few days ago. So we take the chance of today to share a bit of his spirits and his virtue with you all as a way to remember this great Bodhisattva. Okay? So Samanda Bhadra is the word is an ancient word and in Chinese we translated it into Pu Xian. Pu Xian Pu Sa, okay? So Pu Xian or Samanda Brada have the meaning means wholeheartedly doing the goodness wherever you are, providing everywhere. You, know, you spread this kind of goodness to all places that you you go. You know, that is the meaning. So Samanda Brada also uh, is very significant about his superior practice in great actions. That means it's not just making vows, not just having this ambition or inspiration, but you put your intention into actions. Into actions. Okay, and one of the how can you recognize uh, Pusha and Pusha when you see all these stages? One very simple, very easy to recognize is. Pusian Pusa always sit on an elephant. You can see that this statue is in Blue Lotus House. You know, once later on when you walk into the building, you can see it's on your left hand side and the Bodhisattva is sit on the elephant. And elephants representing because in the animal realms, elephant is the most powerful animals on the earth. Okay? And it's so powerful that it can carry many uh, things behind on his back and also humans, you know, so he can carry heavy, heavy, heavy stuff that is strong, powerful. And this also uh, is a symbol saying that when we walk on this Bodhisattva path, Bodhisattva path is a path that you vow to help, to help people to free from their suffering, free from their stresses, free from their fears and anxieties, and want to bring happiness to them. But this is not easy. It's very easy to say, but it's very not easy to practice. But no matter how difficult it is, the Bodhisattva never give up. He is not fear of difficulties. He is not fear of defeats. Yeah, just like the elephants, you know, you can walk through, you know, overcome all the difficulties. That is the, the symbol of the elephants. 
And in the elephant, you can see like three pairs of the six parts that also a symbol of paramita or perfection. You, you, when you want to sell, help someone, is not you, you need wisdom, okay? Not just compassion, wisdom, and all kinds of skills so that you can help different peoples. To have different kinds of use, skills, you need different kinds of perfections, you know? Only if you can perfect with great experience or any skills, then you have the ability to help others. That is the symbol of the elephants. And always, always, you will see, the, they are not alone, always. Bodhisattva, Apusen Pusa is always paired with another <coughs> friends, you know. Her friends is, you know, in the center is the Buddha. And you see on the left hand side, or the right hand side of the Buddha is the one with elephant. Say it's the Pusen Pusa, Samantha Brada. <coughs> on the other side, that is the one on a lion, that is the Manjushri. Manjushri is a symbol of great wisdom. Okay, so wisdom and actions have to come together, that is the meaning. And there are different ways. Some you can see in different stages, for example, in the Mahayana temple, this is very common. The one on the white elephant, that is definitely the Samanda Prada, Bodhisattva. And the one on elephants is the Manjushri. And the, another is like this, you see? Even though there are different uh, directions, elephants always the uh, Samanda Prada, and the one on the elephant, on the lion is Manjushri, okay? So, Samanda Prada is so well known for his vows for actions that his 10 great vows of action becomes a very well known or popular practice in Asia, in the Mahayana traditions. And now I would like to go through the, the meanings of these 10 great vows briefly with you all so that you know what it means behind. So this is the list of the 10 great vows of the Samanda Brada Bodhisattva. And one of them, the first one is to repent the mistakes and evil karmas. So when we come to the practice in Buddhism, we, we have different skillful ways of practice. But the core of the practice is definitely first, first you need to remove to eliminate, to eradicate all the unwholesome, you know, unwholesome inside yourself first. The unwholesome quality is what? Is like how hatred, selfishness, you know, desires, cravings, ignorance, lack of wisdom. So these are what we call all the actions or habits that derive from this kind of unwholesome. We once we realize it, we don't want to repeat it. That's why we make this determination to repent, saying that, oh, I have done this is something that is not so good, you know, oh, I'm just too selfish just now, or I, I ignore the person, I'm not supposed to want to help, but then I change my mind, or something that you scold someone because of hatred, because of the anger that arises at that moment, afterwards you feel like you feel so sorry and you want to not to repeat again, so we say this kind of intention is a good intention to repent. So repent has two meanings. First, you want to say it, say what? Say sorry, you know, take action to say sorry. And second, you ask for forgiveness, ask for acceptance. So to repent, have these two. First, you take action to say sorry, to apologize. The second is ask for forgiveness so that you have the chance or other people give you a chance for you to be a better person, okay? And here, karma means action, okay? Karma means action. And the next, first, until second and three, five, six, seven, in summarize of these seven, actually it means we praise, we respect to the Buddha, and we want to do the wholesome, wholesome deeds. So first of all, it's talking about the Buddha, Buddha, this term, it really means someone who has this perfect, wholesome qualities, okay? So Buddha representing someone who is should have achieved supreme enlightenment. So when we talk about Buddha, we always remember we have someone, a wish, an image in our mind that it is someone who has all these super perfect qualities and we aim 
for. We want to learn from it, so we want to follow his path. How he practice to become so perfect? I want to learn. That is why we come here. We want to find out the way he practice and we will follow and practice so that we can become so perfect and so wise and enlightened like him. So for this kind of teacher is so rare on the earth. Once we meet, we definitely want to pay respect to him, to humble ourselves so that we can learn from the teacher like this. Okay? Not only we respect, okay, pay homage, but we also praise, you know, honor of what of his teaching. That is the truth, okay? Because only after we know the truth then we can be free from all the ignorance you know, that hinder us from seeing clearly what is really happening in our life, you know, the troubles and also other people's problems so that we can look, know the way out and also to make offerings. Offering actually is a way to, to counter it, it's an antidote to the selfishness. Most of the time we are able to help that someone that we know and someone that we like and we always choose you know, to have some limited in the self but to practice, to give generously without making this uh, differentiation you know, wherever we come, come to us that we meet in our life we just help when we see we help without have this kind of differentiation this means a generous, generous offering you can offer your time offer your skills, offer the material support, you know, or even some kind of all kinds of offerings is concluded. But the best, the best offering is to practice accordingly so that both the intention, your bodily actions, the speech is pure, is come from the pure heart, not from the selfishness but selfless, okay? It's not from hatred, but it's compassion, loving kindness, okay? And it's, you don't just talk all those nonsense or idle chattering, but you say something that meaningful. When people listen to it, they get something, and it, then they can benefit themselves. Yeah, these are the best way to offer. That means the best offering is when you live according to the teachings and you practice it, okay? And then when there are times because we are the ordinary people, okay, we have limit. But when we see other people doing good deeds, we rejoice with them. Rejoice means there is no jealousy, we don't feel competition, okay? So we say, oh, I'm so rejoiced that you can do that, something I cannot do. That is also one of the practice too. This is not easy, it's very easy to say. But when the jealousy arises, when the feelings of competition, competitive want to comp compete with other people, you, it's hard to feel riches for other people. So this is also part of the practice. And the rest is to request the Buddha to continue to teach. You know, Just like we always have the desire to learn something, we also want the teaching to be learned by all the people that we don't know and all the generations in the future. That's why we request the teaching remains on the world. And the last two is to always have this kind heart to accommodate and benefit all beings and how when we cannot do all this we would like to share you know in our efforts when we are practicing we always want to share with them you know so that we have this good connection with them most of the time our relation only limited to our families colleagues you know it's a very small cycle circle of life. Now we open it up, open up ourselves so that we can relate ourselves to build up these good connections with all people, including those that we don't know, including or including people that we don't like. This is also a very challenging thing, okay? But no matter what, when we come to the practice, this is how we overcome. The overcome the ego, the overcome, the self, the, the shallowness inside us, so that we also able to develop, you know, such a great compassion, a great wisdom, just like the great Bodhisattva and the Buddha. Okay, so this is a brief explanation, you know, sharing with you about Samadhavrata Bodhisattva and how his wealth and his determinations, his faith, 
in supporting him to walk such a long, difficult path, which is not easy. Okay. So what we are going to do later on is after this talk, we have a short chanting here. Okay. Chanting is also a way to transfer our merits and blessings to all the people that we know and that we don't know. And at the end of the chanting, we will walk mindfully in two lines, okay? So for people in this side, you will follow a Venerable Zhaozhan. And for this side, I walk here and then walk in two lines mindfully. We walk back to the Blue Lotus house. And then once you enter the Blue Lotus house, you will see the Bodhisattva, the Samanda brother, Bodhisattva statue next to you. And then you gather in front of the Bodhisattva statue and read this, recite these 10 great vows of actions together. Is it okay? Yeah. So thank you everyone and may our sharing and also this uh, joy with all the beings and may all of them be peace and happy always. Thank you.